Hi there and welcome. Another magnificent day in Port Vila, Vanuatu. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different to what we normally do. Normally we're showing you um, guests here catching fish and so forth, but today I'm going to show you how we construct and deploy a FAD. Uh, FAD short for fish aggregating device. We normally have a few of them out the front of Port Vila here, so it uh, improves our anglers' chances of catching fish while they're here on a three hour charter, four hour charter, eight hour charter, whatever it may be. But um, bit of rough weather of recent, uh, we've had a couple break off and drift away so today we're about to deploy another one so I'm going to bring you some information on how they're constructed, how they work, why they work and how we deploy them. Have so many people come in here and um, we say we're going to go out and fish around the fad for a couple of hours or we're going to do some jigging at the fad and we explain to people uh, how they work and how they're constructed but I think there's still some, some confusion so today you're going to see how it all works and um, We'll show you how we put them together and get them away. This fad's going to be positioned in a, in a place called Tuki Tuk. Um, it's about 15, 16 miles out of Port Vila. But um, Tuki Tuk fad will sit in about uh, 760 metres of water. We purchased these rolls of rope in uh, lengths of up to 1,000 metres. So the white rope here is the one we're going to use today. That's in the vicinity of a thousand meters long way too long for our requirements so we're going to shorten that down to 800 meters uh, then there'll be some cable and some uh, floats and bits and pieces attached to the top of it rope to the 800 meter length that we require we need to uh, splice these eyes into the top of the rope so the shackles don't wear through the rope and we uh, lose the fad prematurely this is a bit of an art of actually splicing the rope there's a few people here. Daddy's a very good, he's an expert, he's done many of these fads for many many years and um, great at splicing them. This is actually a sinking rope. The fad rope, the 800 meter rope is made out of two different pieces. There's a floating rope and a sinking rope. The sinking rope goes to the top so that if we have any slack or um, on the bottom or the top of the tide when the rope's not under any tension that the rope doesn't actually float to the surface and get tangled up in both propellers and so forth. Yeah, we're now just preparing the um, bottom rope. I he hope you can hear me over the top of our dive compressors here. We're just filling our dive tanks for the day. But um, this is a floating rope, as I mentioned before. The one, the first one we were splicing was a sinking rope. Sinking rope so that uh, the rope stays under the surface, doesn't caught in, get caught in boat propellers and so forth. This is actually a floating rope. This will be attached to the two 400 kilo concrete blocks that sit on the seabed. Uh, the idea of that is if uh, the rope becomes slack at any time, it doesn't rub on the seabed and uh, wear away prematurely and uh, we end up losing our fad. We're now about to unravel this uh, and put another splice in this end as well. Now we've got the uh, rope spliced up both ends. This is the rope that goes to the weights, the floating rope as I've mentioned. We've just put a splice in that. 40 metres of our fad. This is a uh, a rope covered covered cable and this is, has all our um, plastic strapping and it has uh, like a type of a fly wire material once we've got this out let this all unravel and fly out and this is what actually reef type structure that uh, we hope will hold the fish there this is our fad top this will sit up on top of the uh, on the surface of the ocean this is uh, what holds the whole structure in a vertical position uh, this has been uh, a mussel float, uh, used to hold mussel beds afloat, I think it came from New Zealand originally, but it's had a, a steel frame made with some uh, chain hanging off the underneath part of it. This is attached to our top 40 metres of cable. These are our 400 kilos, each of these blocks are 400 kilos each. Because they're going to around 700 metres of water, after they've been uh, been poured in the mould, there's a lot of reinforcement being put in the mould pre, pre uh, pouring. The blocks are actually left for more than 28 days. They're not left to cure for that long. The pressure at uh, 700 metres will crack the blocks. And This is the, the piece of the fad that uh, sits on the surface. 
there's a couple of little flag poles sticking there. Um, the purpose of those, we, we put actually put a flag on it so it's easy to see. And a lot of the guys that go out and fish around the banana boats and things like that, they don't have uh, GPSs or very good uh, navigation systems on board other than their eye and uh, a few landmarks. So we pop a flag in the top of the, the float on top of the fad just so that uh, some of the local boys can find it as well. Once we've got the fad all assembled, we then weld all our shackles and pieces together so that uh, nothing can come undone prematurely and uh, hopefully our fad will stay there for many years to come. As I mentioned before, you can see that everyone here wears the appropriate safety gear. Said, part of the reason we live in Vanuatu is a lot less rules. Even the deployment of a fad, if you had to do this in Australia and New Zealand, you'd need uh, consents and uh, all sorts of environmental impact studies and so forth. Here we just notify fisheries and maritime and uh, we're able to do this sort of thing. The boys are just turning the rope over here. It's quite important to start with everything in the right position because when we deploy this fad, the top, which is the black float, will be put in the water first, then we feed all this rope out. So it needs to unravel off the roll correctly, otherwise we end up with a tangle and uh, we won't be able to get it all in the water. But once this rope's all joined up, it's a real pain to actually uh, undo it and uh, reattach it again. This is the uh, sinking rope now coming on board. This large spool that we've just seen is the one that goes to the bottom. This is the one that attaches to the top end. Very highly skilled technicians we have here. They're doing a great job. As mentioned before, this is the actual probably what you'd uh, call the part that makes the fad work. This is once we've taken all these blue ties off, this will all unravel. Uh, those shade cloth sails will just float in under the surface of the water, along with all that plastic strapping, and that's what holds the fish there. Once again, we've discovered that the uh, working mechanism of the fad was in upside down. Once again, crucial for deploying the fad that we've got everything up the right way, so the rope uh, unravels easily. We don't have any tangles and we don't get anyone caught in it as we're putting it out. We first to load the top. Always trying to knock the paint off my back. This is the part that holds the float, the fed afloat. Now the last part of our job here is to load the concrete blocks, the uh, mooring blocks. Wait. 
Daddy Laurent with his uh, safety boots on here. Daddy's been instrumental in deploying a lot of pads here for probably 15 years now and uh, we've been working together for the last 10 or 11 to um, keep the pads in the water so that uh, maximise the chances of uh, our customers such as yourselves catching fish and also for the locals to um, go and catch some tuna and so forth for the local market. The aim here is to get these weights into the back of the boat without yeah. taking too much paint off. Where, where, where are the first one? Where are the first one? Where are the first one? We've got the back of the boat set up so that we can... Where are the first one? 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 Where are the Two blocks loaded into the boat. The boat's sitting quite low in the water at the back. We're just uh, running out quite steadily to our waypoint at uh, Tuki Tuk. As I mentioned, Tuki Tuk's about 10 11 miles from here. We'll just uh, wander out there and uh, put all this into the water. We get the back. Not a great recommended sea practice. We've got to pick our day to do this. We've got a very, very still day today. Very, very uh, calm conditions and perfect for deploying fads. Uh, the last couple of weeks have been quite rough so we haven't been able to uh, get any of this work done. The idea is now when we head out to the, get into our position we've got a weight point, we're going to replace an existing fad that we had. The first thing we put in the water is the float, we deploy that first, then we put all our, um, our uh, rope covered cable that has our plastic strapping our shade cloth, that's what actually makes the fat work. That sits under this boat here. We put all that in the water first, and then we deploy our sinking rope. That's this rope here. That goes into the water. Once we've got all that in, then we deploy our floating rope. And the last thing we do is we shackle our chains to the floating rope to the concrete blocks. We don't leave the concrete blocks attached at this stage. So if we had a mechanical problem, the sea conditions change dramatically, we may need to dip push the concrete blocks out of the boat to keep ourselves safe so so we don't lose the whole pad uh, we don't have to attach also we'd have a problem if we push the concrete blocks out all this rope would go with it so the last thing we do is attach the chain to the concrete blocks just as we're about to deploy the pad so um, we're all ready to go and now we've just got to wait to get to our position well, this is the part we've been waiting for we're, we're about a quarter of a mile off our um, Bad position, but we've got a thousand metres or eight hundred metres of rope to put out. And um, Shade cloth as it goes here. This is all the material that tends to hold the fish in place. Don't stand inside the centre there, yeah, that's it.
Dedim ya. Dedim. Just got all the um, rope covered cable out. Now we're about to deploy the sinking rope. Okay, what? We have to deploy the floating rope, which will be attached to our weight. Do it fairly uh, gingerly because. We've just lost a bit of now because we had a bit of a tangle in the, um, in the sinking rope. We'll just go gently here. Now we're just running up to our waypoint again. We've got 800 metres of rope on the surface. We'll just get back to our GPS position here and then we'll push the weights out the back. We go, we've deployed the fad. It's taken us, uh, we started this project about 8 o'clock this morning, it's now half past one. Job's done, the fad's in. All we need now is to start waiting for it to work. We have caught fish off fads within a day or two, but normally it takes a week or so for them to really get productive. We need to get some uh, algae starting to grow around the, the, the net and everything on the bottom there, and then the small fish come in, we started getting uh, squirrels and bonito come in, then every, everything else starts feeding on it. So. Why don't you come on over and uh, come fishing with us and we'll bring you out here and in a couple of weeks we're going to have uh, about another three or four deployed. So come and fish around the feds, it really makes it productive. Talk to you later.